This video will show how to remove and replace the intake manifold and will give a little bit of information about the fuel injectors on an Audi A4 1.8T Quattro. You will open up the cooling system so it's a good idea to drain it before starting. At this point the ground strap at the battery has been disconnected. This vehicle has a special code of A and B. A and B. First we're going to move the coolant reservoir out of the way. It's held down by a screw. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove. Loosen up this clamp and remove this hose. Disconnect this connector. It should have a tab that you'll pull back on, but this one's already broken. You're gonna remove two hoses, two hoses right here. Disconnect this hose right here, and it still has the original Oetker clamp on there, but they do lose tension over time. Watch. See, that Oetker clamp lost tension over time, so they are not a lifetime. You're gonna remove this small hose, and then we're gonna remove the fuel rail. It has two bolts, the two inner bolts, there's two outer bolts that hold this coolant pipe. You want to remove these two inner bolts. Socket size, Allen H5. Can easily access them. If you still have the original Oetker clamp, you can cut it with a tool like this. This is an Icon 11 inch cutter, high leverage cutter. I'm gonna go across the top part of it and there you go you guys easy as that the two bolts have been removed but before removing the fuel rail you're gonna want to relieve pressure from the fuel system so if you have a cap for your straighter valve here remove that cap and use a pick to relieve pressure make sure you have a bunch of rags right here because you will drip some fuel and with those two bolts removed and fuel pressure relieved we can now Move the fuel rail out of the way. Cover up the injector ports and then remove two bolts that hold the cooling pipe to the intake manifold. Socket size is also an H5. Next, you're going to remove eight bolts and two nuts that hold the intake manifold to the engine. Socket size is also an H5 for the bolts. The nuts are on the edge. You can get those with a 10 millimeter socket and at least an 8 inch extension. This vehicle is also going to need new injector connectors. This one just snapped. It's all corroded. Same with that one. Look at that. It's all corroded. Disconnect this connector at the throttle body. You're going to pull back on that tab gently until you hear that click and then you can remove the connector. Under the manifold, you're going to disconnect that hose. Then you're going to disconnect that bracket from the manifold. There's a bolt up here that's impossible to get out. The front part of the manifold right there gets in the way. So you would need to remove it from below. Got my H6 socket on that bolt and we're going to remove it from there. Just make sure to disconnect the wire tees from the bracket. Cooling pipe removal time. So the manifold is sitting on two studs, two studs where the nuts were. So when you try to free the manifold from the studs, you're not going to have enough space because the cooling pipe is going to be in the way. You're going to have to remove the cooling pipe or at least move it out of the way. So loosen up this clamp and loosen up that clamp and then you should be able to move this out of the way without removing the other hoses and now you should have enough space to remove your manifold. Under the manifold you're going to have this bracket that's connected onto here with three bolts. Socket size 10 millimeters. So come from under here to remove those three bolts. This bracket is going to contain two solenoids two solenoids that are for the secondary air system. 
And let's take a quick look at our manifold to that impossible bolt. Right there. With the intake manifold removed, you could access components for the PCV system, secondary air system, even the oil cooler. Time for the reassembly. First, clean the mating surface for the intake manifold. Then, add your gasket. I had no trouble fitting the intake manifold back into position. The bolts and the two nuts, I snug them down starting with the inner ones, working my way out. I could not find a specification from Audi, so that's why I just snug them up. Also snug up the bracket that connects down there to the engine. This vacuum breather assembly has two connections to the intake manifold, one right here and another one right here. This bottom one is for the PCV valve hose, and then there's another hose at the very bottom of those. This connector is for the intake air temperature sensor. Throttle body connector right here. There's another hose right here, this small one. And of course, your main intake hose right there. The coolant pipe gave no issues putting it into position. There's a clamp at this end that might be difficult to tighten up. But if you have a tool like this, then it should give you no issues. Now we're working on our fuel rail. The specification for the fuel injector, the res resistance is 12 or 13 ohms. So we're good on that one. If you're gonna replace the O-rings, which now is a great time to replace the O-rings, you're gonna need eight. One at the bottom and one at the top. You don't need to replace the top ones because they, they don't lose their elasticity over time but it's highly recommended that you replace the bottom ones. The original connector for the injectors, the original connectors have this boot, have this boot. Instead of protecting the wires, this boot damages the wires, especially at this corner, right when the wire comes out, and up here, maybe two inches out. So get rid of the boot. I went ahead and used quarter inch conduit, plastic wiring, and this fuel system is looking good. The two fuel rail bolts are torqued to 10 newton meters, which is about 7.38 foot pounds. And that ends the brief overview of the fuel system. We also added a new dipstick tube. It just hooks onto a, or it just sits on top of a metal pipe that's at the bottom. And that concludes the intake manifold removal and replacement for an Audi A4 1.8T Quattro. We still have more work to do on this vehicle. We're going to replace the valve cover gasket and some coolant hoses. So check out those videos on this channel. I hope you learned something. See you in the next one.